Hi everyone, I'm Ivana. I'm an integration developer here at Dots and Arrows, and today I'm going to show you some really cool use cases that you can make with the autonomous agents within the Mac project. Okay, let's go into it. Okay, this is the first use case. So what we did is we downloaded different tenders uh, from the government UK site. Uh, you can find different contracts, uh, notice status if the tender is open, like closing dates, or uh, even contract values uh, on the site. So what we did is we just basically crawled this, the whole site uh, or at least this page, and imported everything, this data, into uh, a vector database. So how does this look in a real use case? So here we have a simple use UI uh, where we uh, I prefilled the use cases in advance. We can select database store. For now, we will use the database the vector store for tenders and contracts, uh, where we enter the minimum similarity score. Uh, this is basically how similar the text that was imported is to the actual query that we are asking. Uh, and of course, how many text segments to be retrieved. We are going to retrieve uh, basically the most similar uh, contents from the text that we imported and how many do we want to actually generate an answer for it. For this use case, I'm going to go over the similarity score just because the data uh, is a bit less structured. Uh, Okay. Yeah, okay, it takes a bit uh, of time. It takes about average 20 seconds to uh, actually generate an answer. And this is how it actually looks like. Um, Basically, I asked, hey, can you provide a list of open tenders in the UK related to the IT services with their deadlines and contract values? I removed the criteria, even though you can include it about the contract values, because, uh, yeah, for this, uh, we wanted to showcase uh, the ones that we actually imported. Uh, so you can see uh, it gives quite a simple answer. The second use case that we can we can we will present today is a field service assistant use case. So basically, if you imagine um, somebody who works uh, with different uh, electronic devices like ovens, dishwashers, etc. He would need, if for example he comes to somebody's house and he doesn't know uh, how a certain device works, uh, he can basically just enter a prompt, hey, can you give me the specifications about certain a certain uh, dishwasher, oven, or whatever, this is the, the error code that we have, what does it mean, how, how can I fix it? Uh, we need just a simple answer and simple uh, use case. So again, about 20-25 seconds on average to load up uh, the documents uh, and to generate an answer based on that data set. And it says the error code on your Whirlpool washing machine indicates an issue with too many suds during installation cycle, blah, blah, blah. This happens with these, these, and those decisions. How to fix this? First step, second step, third step. So this looks cool uh, and looks quite simple now that I show you, but how did we actually implement it and how does this actually work? So basically what we did is we have these four components that we use. These are the most important for this use cases. We used uh, an LLM, uh, in this case OpenAI, uh, which has the model we choose the text embedded large because the data is quite big and structured. You need to be careful with choosing the models uh, so you don't increase uh, the resources that you're using the tokens with the LLMs. Uh, the next component that we used is a vector store. Uh, this is also a connector that uh, is within the Mac project. Uh, here we uh, imported all of the data that we are later generating an answer based on that data set. Uh, we use the AI agent, he just formats in, uh, formats the answer in a user-friendly way uh, to improve the readability and understanding. Okay, and the fourth component was of course uh, MuleSoft, who is actually the bridge to connecting these AI services um, with the MuleSoft components that we were working on and the rest of the world, right? Uh, so how does this vector store look like, first of all? so we imported basically random data uh, and we are having the flow to numerical values. Here, as you can see, these are like the four or five uh, tables that 
be imported. So the first one is standards. Uh, it basically has a numerical floating value that's called an embedding, and then uh, a text segment that we actually imported the original text segment. Okay, how does this work and how does this upload? So basically, this is the first step. In order to generate some data, you need to import the files. Um, we added the, we crawled the site, I will show that a bit later, uh, and then we imported those files into the vector store. Uh, we extracted the text from the provided resources, split it into chunks, of course this is configured, uh, and then transformed this text into embeddings with the power of the LLMs, after which we imported the embeddings into a vector database. Currently I'm using use Azure Cosmos DB, that is hosting um, a PG vector uh, database vector store. Okay. The next step, it's querying. How does this querying work? We have a user query that says, hey, I have an IKEA Tilreda dishwasher, and it shows uh, this error code. What does that mean? How, what are the steps to fix it? Okay, he sends a request to the query vector store who then transforms the query into embeddings, uh, searches for the closest vector store uh, vector in the database. Uh, and then returns text segment that contain the most relatable text along with the similarity score and the source file paths. So basically we return the original text chunks uh, that we just saw in the database. Okay, and then because those text chunks are not readable, we want a user-friendly output, then we use the agent-defined prompt template, which we customized basically our response to the clients and, and better understand the, the question and the query itself and then generate a final answer which is the F3 error code on your IKEA dishwasher indicates a problem with continuous water supply and so on. Okay, so basically the Mac project has multiple uh, connectors that we used for these use cases. How does this look like in uh, actually in an environment? Uh, so this is the, the vector store for the querying. We are setting up the query to the vector store, the template, the max results, the minimum score, the minimal similarity score. Uh, as well, uh, this is the, the flow that I just explained. Uh, for the retrieval of the tenders, we used the crawling uh, functionality, uh, which we had First of all, set the page URL, set the pages because the URL contains a parameter that a query parameter that sets the pages. So first page, second page, it, it implements the pagination. So we went to the first 20 pages, uh, got the content and added that text into the vector store. Okay, if we want to, for example, not just uh, import certain content, we want to import the whole site, for example, uh, we can do that by using um, the crawl website uh, connector, uh, also from the Mac, where we say, hey, uh, set this website URL, go to this depth, so it can be from one to infinitive, uh, download images, download location, and so on. After which we download all the files, we can then import it into uh, our vector store. Uh, that would be it for this use cases. If you have any more questions, please don't hesitate to ask uh, and see you later.